Today we are taking a closer look at the different waters we are using to brew coffee with. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For this video, we are exploring a bunch of different waters and one of the reasons for that is because we have just recently changed our water filter here in the April store. Now bear in mind this is not promotional, we're not paid in any way to do this video. We're simply very interested in using different waters to create the best possible cup of coffee. Now the filter we have put in now is in our system from BWT. Previously we used something else, we're not going to go into what we used, but we are going to kind of explain why we made the change because that's also relevant to what we have here in front of us today. Now we also asked BWD to come and do a little bit of a more thorough analyze on the water that we're using, which again, it's really necessary when you're brewing coffee to have the proper water. Now, we thought it would be fun, since we were measuring our own stuff anyhow, to include a few other brands in this kind of contest. Uh, and the waters that we kind of included was Third Wave Water, which we've been using for a long time here at April. Aqua Code, which is not new, but we haven't used it as much and the peak, which is also not new, but it's something that we actually have been using for quite some time. So what we did was that we set up a cupping with all of these four. I should say, full disclosure, that our own blending of these minerals is not based on the company's recommendations. So both the Ferdware water and the Aquacode are blended into a five liter distilled water jug. Uh, now, with that in mind, we also know that distilled water is actually different, so we can get a different result depending on what we blend in. We blended this into a water that is very easy to find here in Copenhagen, and we used for a very long time together with this mineral pack, so we know we're getting a good result. When it came to the peak water, we used a filter that had been used by me personally uh, on basically a weekly basis for about a month. And what we're seeing when we're measuring that water is that it's clearly time to change the filter, which has been one of the more challenging things with using the peak, but more about that after. Now, in terms of values that we measured, and I'm actually gonna use my phone now, because we're getting into a lot of different numbers. We basically took a closer look at pH, TDS, chloride, total hardness, and carbonate hardness, right? So very fundamentals, there's more stuff to measure, but that takes more time and requires slightly different instruments than we were using when we made this kind of initial analysis. And what's interesting here, first of all, looking at Copenhagen water and why we changed our water filtration system. Because we changed from a system that previously allowed a tiny, tiny bit of bypass from the original Copenhagen water. And we can't stress enough that the Copenhagen water basically sucks when it comes to coffee brewing. It's too much of literally everything, especially chlorides. So the filter that we have now doesn't allow any kind of bypass. It means that the April store basically has zero chlorides in the water whatsoever, which makes for just a better water for our machines, but also a much better water in terms of taste. So that's kind of one of the references that we've done. Now I'm gonna do a little bit of a breakdown in terms of what was the interesting findings in between these cups. And then we also have a full breakdown both in the video on Patreon and also down below in the comments field if you wanna see the exact numbers. So one of the things when we look across the board that is kind of interesting is that the pH value is actually very, very similar in basically all cups. Uh, the main difference being more or less our own store water where the pH is slightly below seven. But apart from that, the pH is between seven and 7.5 on all single cups, basically. Now, because we ended up with the peak having a slightly older filter, we actually got a measurement that was very similar to normal Copenhagen water even though the setting was set on the finest possible filtration. So we're not gonna talk 
too much about that cup at the moment in terms of measurements as they don't necessarily reflect a peak out of the box, right? But that's also the issue with working with those kind of jugs as in you don't really always know what you're getting. You're definitely getting chlorides in your water regardless of if it's out of the box or if it's a used filter. So it's just hard to kind of keep control over the quality of the water that you've been brewing with. Now, taking a closer look at the AquaCode and the Fairway water, which is maybe the more kind of interesting comparison here, is that we see that the pH is very, very similar. The Third Wave is a 7.5 and the Aqua is a 7.4. What differs a tiny bit here is basically the TDS of the water, where the Third Wave, the way we blend it, is a bit higher. It's at 185 and then the aqua code is at 165. Now, we all kind of know that the TDS is not so important, right? It's just a reference number. It's much, much more important what are the kind of ingredients that builds up that value to begin with, right? So people that say that your TDS has to be below something or has to be above something, not really accurate. Water becomes a bit more complicated than that. So basically, when we look at the uh, total hardness, they're very similar. The aqua code is at six, the third wave is at eight. When we look at calcium hardness, the aqua is at one and the third wave is at one to two. So in general, very similar waters with one significant difference. And this is where I think it gets really interesting because the aqua code has a significant amount of chlorides in the water, which is something that third wave doesn't have, right? So what's interesting here is that AquaCode has basically produced a mineral pack actively chosen to have chlorides in it, which you have to assume comes from the fact that they're using natural minerals in their filter, right? So we don't know the exact specs and ingredients there. You can find that on their website and so on, but that's very interesting. Now, personally, I remember tasting AquaCode from way back when they first started. And the first time I tried it, I thought it tasted like ocean water. I thought it tasted like salt, basically. And I have to say, taste-wise, that's kind of where we're ending up here as well. So what we did in terms of tasting these coffees or tasting these different waters is that we chose the same coffee, a Kenyan coffee, Kanamui, pea berry from this season. And we've basically been cupping them a bunch of different times. Now, Keep in mind, outside of this video, we also have been using these different waters in different formations for quite some time now. So we're factoring in experience on other coffees as well. One can argue that a water would suit a specific coffee a bit better, and that's a truth with moderation, but sure, we can, we can agree to that to some degree. Now, when it comes to the different taste aspects, what we're finding here is that in terms of cleanliness, uh, on the cups, if we look at the four ones we tasted, the third wave water is for sure the cleanest cup, by far. It's quite acidic, it's very clear in its flavors, which we appreciate. Perhaps slightly unbalanced when it's hot, but it becomes really juicy and it's just overall very clean, right? Second cup would, would be AquaCode. In my opinion, it smells and tastes like salt. It's hard for me to get over that. I think the people that are using AquaCode are probably working with a much darker roasted coffee than what we do, because I find it hard to believe that someone would use this water and not taste the salt aspect of it, because it's been quite continuous now over several, basically every single time I've been using it. Now, our own store water becomes very balanced. Um, it's very sweet. Again, quite similar when it comes to measurements to the third wave initially, uh, basically mainly because you have a very, very low or zero chloride in both waters. Then our total TDS is a 63, which is much, much lower. And then we also have a total hardness that is also quite similar to actually the third wave as well, right? So quite similar waters, but the main difference here being the fact that the total TDS is a bit lower together with the total hardness and then also the, the calcium hardness, right? But it's clear, I think, taste-wise that water without chlorides tastes better. It brews better coffee. I think that's very clear. So when it comes to brewing at home, when it comes to brewing in a store, uh, we're at a point now where we would definitely recommend to kind of try to remove those chlorides as much as you can because that is going to produce a much cleaner coffee, a much juicier cup of coffee as well. 
Now, that was basically all that we had. Again, we're gonna show you all of these numbers in some kind of graph that is a bit easier for you guys to kind of follow. Um, we know you are all using very different waters to brew with at home. We know that a lot of you have tried the waters that we have been trying here as well. We would love to hear your thoughts on it, which is the best water for home brewing, basically. That is the main question. And what is the most consistent and what has worked well enough for you? I think in my own opinion, I would today lean more towards third wave water than any other mix. Uh, but then again, we're super interested in hearing, is there anything else out there that we don't know about that we would love to try that could maybe taste even better, right? So with that, we want to thank you all for watching. Don't forget to sign up on Patreon. That's where we take these discussions and make it a bit more in-depth. And with that, we also want to make sure that when it comes to these kind of videos, we'll just love to hear your recommendations and your thoughts on what's coming up, right? So really kind of dive into this conversation and come up with some recommendations as well in terms of what we're using when we brew our coffee, because water really matters. Thank you for watching and have a good day. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.